My name is Erin Feiger, and I'm a partner just like you, who's been using the Microsoft Partner Programs and Tools for over a decade. Today, I'm going to show you how to merge two Partner Center accounts together. We're also going to discuss the benefits and the impact of merging accounts. I work with partners who have recently purchased other companies, and those companies happen to also be Microsoft partners. One of the questions I get asked is, should we merge our Partner Center accounts, and what's the impact? If yes, who should perform that action and where do we go inside a partner center to do that? Here are the top three reasons why I think you should merge accounts and the benefits. One, having a unified partner center account to manage your entire partnership with Microsoft is just going to make life so much easier. You won't have to log into two separate partner center accounts and have to perform different actions inside of different partner center accounts. You can have everything rolled into one and go to one place to manage your entire partnership. You're going to streamline those membership fees and only have to pay one membership fee. If you continue to stand alone as two separate Microsoft partner accounts, you will have to pay membership for company A and the membership for company B in order to keep all of your declarations, action packs, and any other um, statuses that you have with Microsoft. The third benefit is that when you consolidate everything underneath one global NPN account, then you're going to boost your organization's overall status and declarations earned. Because if company A had a gold competency and company B had a silver competency, when you merge company B into company A, they're gonna take on that gold competency status. And maybe company B earned a, co a, stat a competency that company A didn't have. So now company A is also going to have that uh, competency status. So you really get the benefit of both organizations and all of the declarations they've earned. Um, and then as you earn those different statuses, it opens up more doors to different programs, more investments and incentives. You'll be able to qualify for additional partner, partner of the year categories. So lots of good reasons and lots of great benefits for merging your accounts. So who needs to perform the merge? You're going to have the initiating partner and the invited partner. You're going to need the account admin or the global admin from both organizations to be involved in this process. You're also going to need the global NPN ID number of the partner account being rolled underneath that parent company. So once you have these individuals, the initiating partner is going to go out to a partner center, log in and go to account settings, account merge, and enter the global NPN ID of the invited partner. Then they're going to submit the request. Then the invited partner is going to log into their partner center account, go to account settings, account merge, and accept that merge. Once you've accepted the merge, then Microsoft is actually going to do all the work on the back end to merge the two accounts together. So what will get merged? The invited organization's PGA account will become a location underneath that initiating company. So company A is going to invite company B, and company B's in uh, global NPN ID number is now going to become a location ID underneath company A. All of the locations from company B are also going to carry over and continue to stay as location IDs. The Azure AD tenant isn't going to merge, but it will roll over and be associated to the invited organization's PGA account. All the users and their roles and permissions will stay intact and also come over. Your published offers and COSAL pipeline will be preserved. And any of your existing benefits and competencies will also be preserved. So what will happen here is while you have both organizations merged under their current um, renewal period, you will have dual benefits and competencies. But then at the time of renewal, then everything will get merged as far as having one list of benefits and one list of competencies. And another question I get asked is like, which 
which anniversary date becomes our anniversary date. So if company A was to renew in September and company B typically renews in December, then the latest one becomes the new anniversary date. So it will then become December as your anniversary date, and that is when you will see all the benefits roll into one uh, unified list of benefits and competencies. What's not merged? So again, that Azure AD tenant, it doesn't technically get merged into the other Azure AD tenant, but it does come underneath and get listed there. So you can see it as an additional Azure AD tenant that is pointed to that invited organization's PGA account. Your CSP accounts do not get touched. In your associated MCPs, while they are users um, and any of their permissions will stay intact, you need to have your associated MCPs relink their learning accounts to their new uh, PGA account that they are now associated under. So what do you need to do post merge? Post merge, again, the um, the invited organization needs to have their MCPs log into Partner Center, go to their uh, pro their profile and relink their learning account to their new PGA account that they are now associated under. You also want to double check, uh, make sure everything rolled over correctly, make sure you see all your location IDs, uh, make sure you see your Azure AD tenant, uh, double check your payout and tax profiles and banking information is still the way you want money to be routed um, un underneath your new organizational structure. So let's go out to Partner Center just to show you a few things on how you can double check and make sure that account merge went smoothly. So when I'm in Partner Center and I log in and go to the upper right hand corner and click on the configuration wheel and go to account settings, the first page I'm going to go to is identifiers. What I'm looking for here is I want to make sure I can see the um, invited partners, global MPN, and all their location IDs now listed here in one um, long list of MPN accounts under my parent global account ID. So that invited initiating partner, company A, um, I'm logged into company A's um, partner center account and I can see everything here. You'll also be able to see all the publishing accounts. The publishing accounts from company A and company B should all be listed here as well. When you move over to the tenants page, you should see both organizations tenants listed here. Uh, company A's Azure tenant and company B's Azure tenant. Um, if you do not see both of these Azure AD tenants listed here, you should submit a support ticket to make sure that the Azure tenant gets moved over because all of the users and the permissions and roles and everything is associated from that invited partner. Uh, at their, at their Azure AD tenant. So it's important that that Azure AD tenant comes over so that all the users come over. You, if you see both of these tenants, then you can come here to user management and you should be able to find uh, individuals in both organizations listed here and you can double check their user permissions to make sure all the programs that they had access to support, they still have access to support those programs going forward. So the core tip of the day is schedule a meeting uh, between the account admin or global admin of company A and the account admin and global admin of company B so that you can initiate the account merge together at the same time. They'll go in, they'll initiate the merge, then company B will go in and accept the merge and that will really speed up the whole process and if something isn't uh, working correctly, hopefully you'll be able to troubleshoot that real time because you'll have all the right people on the phone together. Know that global NPN ID number. You're not going to use a location ID of the invited partner. You need to know their global NPN account ID. That's what's going to um, pull over and pull everything that's associated when you do the account merge. And lastly, double check and make sure that that account merge went smoothly. Have some users um, from the invited partner log in, make sure their permissions are still uh, intact and they have access to all the same programs that they're used to supporting. And don't forget to have your MCPs reassociate to the new PGA account that they are now underneath. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Uh, I'm Erin Feiger, and thank you for joining me on this journey inside Microsoft's Partner Center portal.